Ugh. What the fuck? <laughs> what <laughs> are you? Wild time. Boxing. This is a much better noise. Woo! It's the wild times. We're beatboxing with fart sounds over here. It's episode number 74 of the greatest show on the air. The biggest show in the world. The number one podcast in the greater Santa Barbara area. Probably not, but... Ah, well, smart. I like what you did there. <laughs> Forrest, I got an update for you, bruh. Okay. We are go. the 77th ranked comedy podcast on iTunes in Sweden. We oh, are, oh, take that, ready, Sweden. Ready for this? We're the number yep. four comedy podcast in Algeria. This is These are nice. real stats. This and we're number, number 16 in the island of Mauritius. Yes! All yeah, my unfortunately, fans unfortunately, out there. <laughs> gentlemen, unfortunately, I happen to know for a fact that there are only 77 comedy podcasts in Sweden. So Period. Oh, okay. That's okay. Period. We'll take All together. it. Hey, there's okay. more than 16, though, in Mauritius, and so we'll take that. That's a fact. All right. Well, if you're listening Mauritius for this is. first time, this is the Wild Times podcast. Clearly, we're a comedy-ish-like show where we talk about wildlife adventure, what's in the news, play games, have lots of fun. I am one of your three hosts, Forrest Galante, the broologist, the extinct animal finder guy, the guy that's written a book recently, hangs out with these two nerds. These two nerds happen to be the producer and the professor. What's up, Mr. Brofessor Ritep? Hey, how's it going? It's <laughs> a uh, double holiday for me today because I'm dating a Jewish woman, so uh, Shalat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, I believe is Shabbat. what you say. Not yeah, yeah. Shalom. Nope. It's not a. <laughs> it's Day. not an onion for yeah. a holiday. And Labor Day, so we're yeah, it doing doesn't some grow labor in the ground and taste delicious. Uh, very good. Shabbat very Shalom. Good. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Cheers to Cheers, that. Cheers, gentlemen. Happy to be here. And yeah. Mr. Papa P. Patrick DeLuca, the producer himself. What have you been up to, yeah. Pat? I've been thinking about how I'm going to answer a question that I got from a brosner, and I want to throw it right to you guys. This was tremendous. On, uh, this was on DM okay. on the Instagram. Which okay, means dick meat or I don't know. I don't know okay. exactly sure. I think it's dick meat. So, yeah. and I'll, I'll go first since I had a minute to think about it. So, he wants to know what uh, you're making a Wild Times movie. Yep. Give me the yep. one sentence pitch about what the plot is and which who you want to be cast to play each of the three of you. Oh, oh what a God. great question! That's a uh, great yeah. question, Peter. You go yeah. first. I need some thinking power. I'll go, I'll go, because okay. I've got my actors here. Okay, I haven't right. thought about my plot. Okay. But Can I, I guess? Say, I know who you're going to pick for yourself. I already know it. I'll say it at the same time you say it. Okay, I'll count okay. it down. So I think the one-sentence plot would be that we go out to look for an extinct animal and That's forest. It. That's all you have. That's two sentences now. No, and. and oh, Oxford comma? Okay. And forest gets abducted by the local, like a local tribe. And so then the two idiots, Peter and Patrick, have to not only save Forrest, but also save the extinct species. Um, Forrest is going to be played by Hugh Jackman because their beard yes! matches. Yeah, their beards are very close. They both are fairly hair suit individuals. Uh, yeah. I think <laughs> Hugh, could, Hugh could kind of play off your like lovable cockiness in a good way. Yeah. Yep, um, I like that a lot. That's, so it's I gonna like be that Hugh Jackman. Great for myself. Ready? Wait. Three. Yep. Two. One. Bobby Flay. Ryan Gosling. Bradley Cooper. Oh, oh no! Oh, damn it! God. No, I definitely no. thought you were going Bradley Cooper. I'm going Ryan Gosling just because everyone thinks that I look just like him, especially when I take <laughs> off my shirt. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Gosling's yeah. gonna play me. Yeah. Okay. And he also has Peter. like a ridiculous dad bod, or what? Yeah, exactly. And then Peter is going to be played. By uh, actor could be living or dead. Peter's going to be sure. played by my one of my favorite comedic actors, very lovable goofball, John Candy. They look alike. Um, <laughs> he's from Chicago. <laughs> yeah, he's from Chicago. <laughs> exactly. They both love deep dish. There's my movie. I'll fucking, I'd be honored, by the way, if John Candy came back from the grave to play me. That'd be <laughs> that'd be a real thing. All right, I'll go second. Um, well, I'm writing these called... down for a future pitch, by the way, when I strike <laughs> it big, because these are hilarious. <laughs> um, well, okay, go ahead, Peter. Go ahead. So it's the wild times, right? Yep. <sighs> things are wild. And uh, we 
I mean, it's gotta be, it's gonna be a little bit more than one sentence. We are fucking getting crazy. We're going back to college in Zimbabwe, right? <laughs> oh boy. Oh and boy. Have you ever seen it. Porky's? It's going to be like Porky's, but with the three of us, okay? <laughs> love it. We're getting crazy. I fucking love this. <laughs> you can't be canceled in Zimbabwe these days, or <laughs> like you can out here. So that's what we're going to be. That's what we're going to be doing. Playing, um, playing Forest, coming back from the grave, will be uh, Steve Irwin. No, wait, Crocodile Dundee, who played him? There you go. Uh, yeah. uh, Paul Hogan, pa- he's Paul still Hogan. very much alive. Yep. Paul yep. Hogan. He's a national Hogan. treasure in Australia. That's right. <laughs> national uh, treasure. It's a fun pick. Playing, playing me is obviously going to be Jeff Bridges. Oh, that's a good pick. Like that's a Great good pick. pick. That's way Great better pick. than what I had written down. <laughs> And playing Pat is going to be, I don't know the actor's actual name, but the person who played Pee Wee Herman. He got Paul caught masturbating in a theater. Paul yeah, Rubens. Paul Rubens. <laughs> He's oh, that's meager. Fantastic. He literally looks like you. It's, yeah, it's a good Dude, pick. That's, that's, you just formed one of the, like, most cohesive paragraphs that I've ever heard you form on this podcast. <laughs> that, that worked Double top holiday, to bottom. baby. <laughs> Double holiday. <laughs> it's really good. It's really yeah. good. Wow, these are both really fun movies. All right. The Wild Times podcast, or the Wild Times movie, rather, is three idiot friends that are on spring break, sort of similar to Retep's going back to college. We're a younger version of ourselves. We're hanging out. We each have our own sort of skill set. Patrick's the ladies' man. Retep's the lovable goofball. Forrest is the handsome nerd. And uh, here we are back in college, <laughs> where, or not back in college, on spring break. Everything goes tits up. Uh, we, it's, we, it's, it's a without a paddle situation where we end up washed down the river and we have to figure out a way to make our way back through zany, wacky adventures. It involves all kinds of weird animals that I'm nerding out about and get us lost and up a tree and all over the place with. Patrick being the cool, suave ladies man is, is like wandering into cabins and getting some Harold and Kumar like weird wife action. Ritep being the goofy dork is uh, just kind of fumbling his way along and tripping over things and just being the Ooh. comic relief. Yep, yep, yep. That's it. Um, so that was one sentence. Accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yep. One yeah, sentence. Exactly. <laughs> the, no, the pitch for the movie is supposed to be shorter than just watching the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, playing Who's Pat. playing who? Yeah. All right, no, so playing myself, uh, Chris Pratt, because chubbier Chris Pratt and I actually look kind That's of similar. Bad. Yeah, he's kind of goofy. He was funnier yeah. when he was chubbier. He's got that sort of lovable arrogance, like Patrick said, that I think is adorable. Um, so you play, think you're adorable. Okay. I do, I do. Got it. See, he's lovable arrogance. Adorable. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, playing Spot you, on. Peter, is Zach Galifianakis. You know, you're he's oh, there. good pick. It's not bad. Yeah, he lost makes, a lot of weight. A lot of weight. He's, no, he, he's it's not a fat now. thing. It's a, it's a oh, beard it's and hair John and, Candy? and okay. goofy thing. Um, All right. And playing Patrick is Kevin Hart. Uh, oh, which, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> he's short uh, because apparently I'm five foot two. <laughs> According to Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, by the way, so I just I just <laughs> muted and screamed because uh, Alexa started reading me facts about John Candy. Shit, she's gonna do it again. I saw oh, name. Dude, I, I'm so glad you clarified that because I thought you were screaming at your girlfriend. <laughs> no, that would never. And be I'm such sure a the thing. Brosners also thought that. Uh, uh, no, that's, that's, that's a, a fun great game. I want to see all three of these movies. Yep. Yep. If you want to oh, see man. them, let us know. Start tweeting big movie directors and producers and all that. <laughs> Start tweeting them. Yep. <laughs> hey, these three guys from this tiny podcast I listen to want to make a movie. Not in Algeria, mate. We are not tiny there. We're number four. That's true. That is a good point. <laughs> out of three or out of five total podcasts Dude, in Algeria. What? Let me you to make that same joke, pal. Yeah, come on. Let it go. Just twice. But also, I mean, we're obviously doing the podcast too, in the too US. many. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's go. What do we so got next? We got? Any more, uh, uh, Any more uh, DMs? Yeah, anything else fun for, on your guys? Uh, I haven't checked the DMs. I'm not lying. So I'm not going to just say I have them. So you guys got any other DMs? Yeah, I, I like this one here. Uh, uh, it's, this is a guy who says, hang on, hang on. Oh, this was a Patreon. Tell me what nice. you think of this, Forrest. Okay. Uh, the guy says, I found a hammerhead worm today. This is from Aaron Martin. Okay. I found a hammerhead worm today in the Northeast. Mm-hmm. How toxic are they? Uh, and what are their impacts on the local earthworm population? I have well, never heard of a hammerhead worm. 
Have you? Yeah, they're yeah they're a type of slug. Um, the the name kind of explains what they look like. They're these big slithering things with this hammerhead shape. They are predatory. I have no idea what their impacts are in the local earthworms. Um, and cool find. I don't. Are they don't toxic? Know. Do you know? I didn't. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know if they're toxic. Peter, your thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is a big problem, uh, <laughs> mostly because I don't know what an earthworm is, so I can't answer that. Hammerhead. They're they are not Hammerhead toxic worm. to they're not toxic to humans or animals. Here's a good one from another I'm Patreon, Alex Ross. I have a question for you guys, which I think he means Forrest on this one. Uh, there was a movie <laughs> called Deep Blue Sea where there's like this lab, and they made these massive under uh, they made these massive mako sharks. They okay. bred them. Okay. Okay. He said there's a scene where the diver is holding on to the dorsal fin of the shark as it swims. Is this possible? I need to know. Love the show. It is. Oh, wow. That's it is. It is possible. And back, and I'll say something here that, uh, you know, it's kind of controversial. Back before we were so, like, concerned about upsetting everything, people used to do it a lot, myself included. Like, 14-year-old Forrest Galante used to go and swim with sharks and grab onto their dorsal fin and ride it. You know, until they get kind of annoyed and shake you off, and then they just lazily keep swimming. And, this is um, the movie, by the way. No, I'm just being <laughs> honest. I used to do it, and, and so did a lot of other people. People like Ocean Ramsey, who are, you know, at the top of the sort of shark conservation poster child world. Everybody used to do it, and then it became like, you know, oh, don't do that. The sharks don't like it. Understandable. And so now people don't do it. But the short answer, yes, it's absolutely possible to ride a shark by the dorsal fin. That's fucking wild, dude. Yeah, I, I cool. thought that was just like a movie trope. Nope, done it. Is it? Do you think it's fun for the sharks? No, I don't think it's fun, and I don't. I mean, you know, if you did it on a two foot long shark, it would like stop it, right? And it would be annoying. Sure. Um, I don't think it's fun. I also, to be quite honest, don't think it's like negative, like people think it is. I think it's just sort of like an annoyance to them, where they're like, okay, this thing's grabbing onto me. All right, it let me go. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like. Yeah. It's not like you're riding it until it get, reaches the point of exhaustion or anything like that, because typically you're holding your breath or free diving or whatever. So it's like you hang on for 10 seconds and let go. And again, right. I haven't done this in years and years and years. I used to do it when I was a teenager, but it was, uh, I always thought it was kind of fun. It was a cool way to interact with the shark. And then you sort of think about it and you're like, yeah, I'd be pretty annoyed if some guy just walked up to me and grabbed me by the belt and hung on with a skateboard while I was like walking down the street. You know, so it's like, I get it. Like, well, yeah, it's not the greatest. Speaking of annoying, doing annoying things to fish, Peter, I know you don't want to screen share a lot, but pull up the fifth Patreon message from Mark Durbart. Um, All right. Well, at Mark Durbart sent us a, a DM. He okay. said, I see this a lot and I want to know if I ever catch a fish with this little fucker inside its mouth, is it still edible? Oh. <laughs> or would it survive in my belly and eat my tongue? These are good questions. He's talking he about a tongue-eating isopod, those parasitic um, crustaceans that are, it's a lice. It's a type of lice that eats the entire tongue and actually Bro, replaces. can I just tell you something? Yes. I'm looking at the picture that Peter's about to pull up. My whole body's itching. It's fucking with me, dude. <laughs> I haven't seen the picture, but I know exactly what he's talking about. Because I've caught oh. Snapper with that in their mouths. It's gnarly, huh? Dude, it is so gross. <laughs> it's on the show, Doc, Peter. Oh, the fifth, you said the it was on the Brosner. Patreon. No, it's the fifth Brosner DM. Uh, it is okay. huge. It, when Typically, when you describe like a louse or something like that, I think of it as being kind of microscopic. This thing's like the size of like a mouse. Yep, they're it's pretty gross. In, so how, the do these, way, how, how do they work? Yes, yeah. yeah, so they work, um, they're swimming around in the ocean, right, as a larval stage or sometimes on reefs and coral reefs, and they crawl into the mouth of the fish, uh, usually tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, and sometimes they can come from riding the backs of other fish, the snapper. So that's a mangrove snapper that has preyed on. And then they grip onto the tongue and they slowly eat and dissolve away the tongue of the fish and replace it with the growth of their own body. So that fish has no tongue left. Its entire tongue is wow. just that isopod um, that's that's eaten away its tongue. And, and it's sure attached. it doesn't feel good. Oh, yeah. No, it's like burrowed in and chowing down on, on the fish's flesh. Can we get rid of these? Can we get rid of these? I know we're not supposed to get <laughs> yeah, rid of easy. everything. Done. Anything. There's a butterfly effect, right? Can we just get rid of these, man? I don't see a reason that we couldn't, to be honest. I don't know what they <laughs> what, what they do for the world, but it's nothing good. 
Um, yeah. So if you caught a snapper fact. like that, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, I was just going to tell you something interesting. Fact: When we were putting together Extinct or Alive episodes, I want to say it's the Stellar Sea Cow. I think it is. But okay. there was a marine mammal that we were looking at, and I'm pretty sure it was the Stellar Sea Cow that had a vaginal lice. Similar to that, nice. vaginal crabs, but huge, right? I'm talking like the size of a small king Ooh. crab, like 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 bigger than oh. a shoebox. But it was endemic. No. This this listen, listen, this is interesting. The uh, the crab, like think as like crabs, like humans get crabs, right? That kind of crabs, like the STD crab yeah. that the that the stellar sea cow had was an endemic species to the stellar sea cow. It could exist on nothing else but the stellar sea cow. And it was symbiotic with them. So when the stellar sea cow was driven to extinction, as was this giant um, parasitic herpy crab. So if you were to find one, you'd, if you were to find a stellar sea cow, it would actually be a two-for-one rediscovery because the odds are they'd still have these parasitic giant herpy oh, crabs. Wow. Yeah. Um, Maybe an extinct or alive special, dude, a twofer. A twofer, yeah. So you find, you find the marine mammal and you also find its STD. Which is a living <laughs> thing that all only lives on that. So I don't know. I always thought that was kind of interesting, dude. So I was just reading a story about fucking ticks the other day because apparently it's a, like it, it's crazy everywhere, certain yeah, parts of the U.S. especially. And they give you fucking. They can give you Lyme disease, which is essentially like you have. A terrible, you get depressed, you get anxiety, you get all kinds of weird, you can't get out of bed. It's all like, kinds what? of things. So, Why Adam, would... Adam Shevitz, friend of the pod, literally today is probably the first day he's getting over his Lyme's disease. Just bought a house in Connecticut, Redding, Connecticut. Took, was playing outside with his wife and daughter. I think he might have been mushroom hunting in their yard kind of thing. Came back in, pulled a couple ticks off him. Two days later, started feeling absolutely queezed and That's gnarly crazy. case of Lyme's disease. Dude, yeah, and this can fucking go on for years in some cases. I read about oh, this, yeah, and I'm like, can. how can this tiny little fucker parasite just ru- it can ruin your life? Everybody, yep. be aware of I ticks. Know. Do practice tick safety. Yep. Well, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but there's a big outbreak of of uh, deer tick on the beaches in L.A. in the sand. Yep. I read about yep. that, which doesn't make crazy. any sense. Yep. Fucking crazy, man. Um. But so for us to answer our, our bro's question, if you caught a snapper that had that parasitic louse instead of a tongue, would you still eat the fish? Hundred percent. Have done a bunch of times. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Doesn't affect that's the great. meat whatsoever. Still okay. tasty. Would you eat the yeah. louse? No, that's yuck. <laughs> <laughs> I want to save the rest of our Patreon messages for a special uh, podcast where we'll just we'll go through all those on Patreon. Okay. Um, but. Forrest. Yes, sir. I do have to just ask you this one question. Do it. This one's really good. All right. One one more question from our Patreon bros. Skull Haiti or Hottie. He's got a cool first name, Skull. S K O A L, like the, the chew. No, no, S K O L L. Skull? Okay. Maybe he's from Norland. <laughs> uh, so he said there's stories of bears. Or bear with long tails throughout many different cultures, like very long tails on, on, on bear. He said, is there any reason sort of evolutionarily that you could think about to think that bears may have used to have longer tails than they do now? I thought that was kind of cool. That's very interesting. Um, so, yes, I can think of an answer to that. Um, so think of red pandas or tree right. kangaroos, right? So these are animals that are similar to bears that are semi uh, arboreal, right? Meaning they live in the trees part of the time and on the ground part of the time. And having a big tail actually helps a ton with balance. So if bears sort of evolved from being mostly primarily tree dwelling creatures, and as we know, they still go up trees all the time, smaller bears in particular, right? Black bears spend a lot more time in the trees than brown bears. Um, You know, if over time, they sort of left the trees and moved lower and lower onto the ground, it would make sense that their tail would get shorter and shorter. Because a lot of the time, those big tails are used for agility and balance in tree climbing. Now, I'm basing mm-hmm. this on absolutely nothing. This could be completely wrong. Right. Bears could have evolved from, from mice. I don't know. 
But <laughs> if they if they came from being more tree dwelling animals over generational time, it would make sense to me that they could have devolved a tail. I mean, because when you look at a like a grizzly bear or whatever, and you see that tail, I mean, it's like a little hot dog sticking off the back of its ass. I mean, it. Yeah, we have about adorable. as much of a tail as a as a bear does. <laughs> It's adorable. You ever fall on your tailbone and hurt it real bad? <laughs> oh, yes. One time that was uh, unbelievable. I broke mine. Like maybe. Yeah. You broke your tailbone? How did you do like that? Ten, ten years ago. Pat comes into, we were working on Whale Wars. He's on a, he's got to carry a fucking blow up donut around. No him. way. I think, I, I this didn't is when I still hated him. It, it was I fantastic. Did, I didn't what, use a donut. Okay, what, what, how did you break your tailbone? I was uh, in a bar fight. What? I need to make some sad music here. It's not true. It's not true. Uh, No, it's it's quite literally true. Uh, There was a melee at a bar in uh, Laguna Beach. Okay. And I, (laughs) a guy was like punching at my friend and I kind of tackled him and we went on to a table and then he rolled, he rolled me over. So he was on top of me and both of our full weight fell like about, you know, I don't know, maybe three and a half, four feet. Oh, His oh, full wow. weight on top of me, and I landed right on my ass. Oh, and uh, oh, everything God. got broken up. It was fine. And then, uh, and I felt okay, like whatever. I didn't realize something terrible had happened. Um, and then the next morning when I woke up, I couldn't move. And oh, it, oh, a broken tailbone is a humbling experience. You can't drive. You can't nope. sit. Laying down feels like shit. God, don't even try to have sex with your with your lady friend. <laughs> oh, uh, God. You are out yeah, of commission I'm, for like, like two hurting. full months. It is Going really, really humbling. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Walking um, like an old yeah. man. Yeah, yep. don't break your tailbone, the, kids. Unfortunately, the humbleness wears off about 30 days after the whole experience. So <laughs> we have that today. <laughs> Forrest, oh, what's in the good. news this week, bro? Yeah. We got oh, a jingle. Oh, what's Peter? in the news? Peter, jingle. Jingle. Do it. I know. Do it. I know. Come on. Do it. Guys, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's in the news? <laughs> Son, news from the underground. I love that. What's in the news? What's in the news? I love the that news? guy who made it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there's a couple fun things floating around the news. Uh, one of my favorites is there's an animal called a lyre bird, okay? And a lyre bird is an Australian mm. bird that can mimic almost any sound, right? Everybody thinks of parrots as being sound mimicking birds. Well, these lyre birds are incredible. They do car alarms, they do camera shutters clicking, um, all kinds of things to trick people, and we don't really know why. But what we do did find out this week is that a lyre bird at a zoo in Australia has found a new trick. It's been recreating a baby crying perfectly to try and piss off mothers with their children, which I think is just phenomenal. Can you imagine you're like at the zoo, <laughs> everybody everybody who has a kid is just like, oh my God, the only thing I don't want my kid to do is cry in public. It's so embarrassing. It's awful. I then have to deal with it. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, you're, you're pushing your stroller around. All of a sudden you hear, wah, wah, and oh, you're like, oh, God. fuck, it's my kid. You know, you what have I done now? My night. Yeah, yeah, it's ruined, and it's just, you can't figure it out. It's a bird overhead in a tree just pissing you off for the fun of it. I think it's hilarious. Listen, uh, let me just say, fucking crows do this shit all the time, and so do pigeons. Pigeons literally will sit, this happened to me in Chicago, on like a tall building right above doorways and try and shit on people intentionally as they're coming out. Birds are fucking genius, and they do this shit on purpose because you think they're so, having a good huh? time. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. It's weird that we call okay. them bird brains because they do some sneaky shit. <laughs> so you're saying that this this bird is a liar? Liar. It, needle, it intentionally <laughs> it intentionally needles people, and it's sneaky. Correct. S- Correct. Sounds yep. like Peter's ex-wife. <laughs> oh, zing. zing! Listen, I will say this: there are. This now, Forrest, is there yes. a potential that it's doing this for some sort of advantage, evolutionarily speaking, like getting attention from humans so that they'll give it food or throw food at it to shut it up or anything like that? <laughs> sure. I mean, shut it's up, possible. bird. I'm going to throw bread at you. <laughs> it's all you got. I, I mean, maybe. I don't I don't know why. I, I haven't read the full report because I just saw the headline and was like, oh, that's really funny. Um I don't know what the bird is trying to get out of it. I also know for a fact that birds enjoy entertainment, right? I mean, if you've ever 
been to one of those places where they have a bunch of parrots, they all have little jingly things with the mirrors and the, you know, birds like entertainment. And I think this lyre bird is probably sitting there laughing to itself hysterically as it is pissing off the young mothers. I think that yeah. I think that's really funny. I think that's the whole reason he's doing it. Dude, I mean, I, I swear to God, like Pat said, I don't know why we call them bird brains. They got to be some of the smartest fucking animals out there, honestly. Well, speaking of them being smart, there's two birds in the news this week that I found to be pretty Ooh, fascinating. Double holiday for Retep, double birds for Forrest. Yeah, double oh, yeah. bird a day for me. Um, <laughs> in Indonesia, for the first time ever, scientists have, uh, scientists have observed wild cockatoos using tools. Now, this is the first time that we've seen oh, yeah. a non-primate actually using a tool. And it's pretty advanced. It's amazing. So what these cockatoos are doing is they're eating these fruits called sea mangoes, um, which is it's toxic to humans, but it's something that birds can eat, right? And these cockatoos have been observed uh, taking the pit of the sea mango, sharpening it, and using it like a knife to cut open the covering of the pit. Another bird was filmed form, uh, taking that knife and f- wedging it into a crack in the pit to sort of force it to widen so they could get inside of it. And then another bird wow. would craft a spoon-shaped tool to dig out the pulp and eat it. So, I mean, not just like, I, you know, monkey hits rock kind of thing. I mean, this is like pretty advanced, like making spoons and knives and stuff. I, it's fascinating. And And not only that, I mean, the thought that goes into sharpening something, knowing that you can sharpen something to a point and use it as a tool like that, and then having, you know, cooperation from your bird buddies. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's that's actually shocking. Insane. Because they, you're know. right, that's not just like bashing something with a rock, which is obviously cool to see like the octopus, like, you know, open the nuts that right. way. But like, yep. y- the, the thought process that has to happen, because you would think the bird would just go, I can't eat this, end of story. Right, right. Instead <laughs> right. of right. going... But wait a minute, there might be a better way. I know. Yeah. If I had yeah, something yeah. sharp, but I don't, yeah. I'll make it. Yep. How do I? Like, it's there's serious. like 10 yeah. points of logic that have to be strung together for that to work. It's amazing. It's, it shows it's amazing intelligence. It's interesting, too, because do you think it's like because it knows that it can open shit with its, like a sharp beak and it's like trying to mimic that with a tool and being like, oh, no, this hurts my beak. I'm going to fucking make a tool. I'm going to sharpen a mango nut. Yeah, man. I think they're just, they're more intelligent than we give them credit for. They look, it's problem solving, right? That's what it ends up, that's yeah. ultimately what it is, right? There's a problem and these birds are figuring out a way around the problem. And, and I think that yeah. they're just looking, you know, who knows if that's like, who knows if the co- cognition of being like my beak is sharp, I need to make something else sharp is there. Or if it's yeah. sort of just generations of trial and error, right? Tried the rock, that didn't work. Tried the, uh, you know, I don't know what else, X other things, that didn't work. Oh, found something kind of sharp, that works. And sort of that slow evolution of figuring out what tools do and don't work. I, I, who knows? I just think it's freaking awesome and shows how smart they are. Well, here's a co- yeah. cool piece of trivia about birds being smart. Don't Google it. Let's play a little game. You guys both guess. Price is right rules. Okay. 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 You can't Don't go, go over. over. You can't. Okay. How many? So the Guinness Book of World Records for the bird that that had the most English vocabulary words. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now. It was a parakeet, mm-hmm. known in the UK as a budgie. Mm-hmm. It was a parakeet that set the record in 1995 as the bird with the largest vocabulary. How many English words? Did the parakeet know? I'm going to go, go first. I'm going to go with 3,995, Bob. Thank you for calling me Bob. <laughs> I'll hold my <laughs> mic like this now. <laughs> I'm going to go 94. Unfortunately, Peter Forrest wins because the price is right rules. But you guys basically split the difference. The answer is 1,728. Wow. Dude. Think of that. No. That's Let me tell you something. You guys, <laughs> no. you guys, this is fucking crazy. I'm calling it right now. You know how people are scared that eventually AI is going to take over the world and yes. we need to like be careful and we can't weaponize it? Yep. I'm calling it right now. Fucking birds are going to take over the world. Next hundred years. They're dude. not even real, dude. They're government Next drones. hundred. 
Six <laughs> hundred <laughs> years. Have One bird, dude, grows to the size of a human, and we are fucked. <laughs> well, do you know, Forrest? Like, how does what is what is like? My dad had a bird that knew a few words, but he would just well, he knew two. He would go, "Hello, asshole." Um, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's all he'd say. Charlie the bird, uh, but it was a parakeet. But but what uh, what are they actually doing? Like, because they're not. I don't That's know. They're not question. like reading books. Like, how do they? What the fuck is the yeah, bird it's not doing? Like, and it's also uh, not like they have human vocal cords. They're they're like. Well, they, right. they, so that you're wrong. I mean, you're not wrong, but they do have. So the reason that we, so human beings have incredibly advanced vocal cords, right? It's a reason we're able to make such a, a wide diversity of sounds, and that's why mm. we form so many different languages, among other things. Um, right, birds. Certainly parrot species in particular also have a very wide range within their vocal cords. So you're right. They don't have human vocal cords, but they have the closest ability. It's one of the reasons like um, Alexandra Mort Mortensen, I think is her name, Morton, whatever it is, who wrote Listening to Whales. She talks about whale intelligence, right? We'll never be able to communicate with them. They don't have vocal cords the way that birds do. So no matter how intelligent a whale might be, there's really no way for it to show us its intelligence because mm, there's no, you know, the, right, the level right. of communication is impossible. Um, right. Anyway, I, I'm digressing. But my point is just that it's pretty interesting because of all the creatures across the planet, not all the different primates, everything, birds of all things are the ones that are closest to being able to actually talk to us. And as Patrick said, you know, some of them can say a thousand plus words, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, why? I I think it's just that they can really. I don't, you know, I really don't know. I've never had a pet bird that hasn't been an annoying peacock or a chicken. So I really don't know. Like, I've never spent a lot of time with like a domestic parrot and sort of got to understand why they like to speak and squawk and all of that. I mean, I I think it's interesting. So so let's recap. You've got okay. an animal that can has a vocabulary of over a thousand words. It mm -hmm. can speak human language. It can create sharp tools, and it mimics baby human babies mm -hmm. to draw the attention of, and distract humans. And they have a good time waiting and shitting on humans as they exit buildings. This is, this You're is, telling me you're that these together. things... First of all, aren't robots, and second of all, aren't going to take over the world in the next hundred years. That robot <laughs> thing is so ridiculous. The whole like birds aren't real thing. That's did we talk about that on the pod? I don't know if we did. We or did we just talk about it ourselves? I don't. We, we probably just talked, talked about, about it ourselves. I think. Yeah. So. so why don't you why don't you talk about it for a second? And because well, people I'm don't no know. expert on it. All I no, know. Me either, but yeah. All I know is I've seen literal like handwritten posters on telephone poles around Santa Barbara oh, yeah. and Los Angeles that say yeah. things like birds aren't real, bird, pigeons right. are government drones. And when I was seeing this, I was like, all right, you, you sir, have my attention. And I Googled <laughs> it, and it's like a real thing. It's, like, it's sort of like a flat earther kind of thing where there's like a legitimate group of people that are, are behind it that are trying to prove that like birds are drones. And yeah, I, I, I well, mean, so, what more so, can I say? It's insane. Well, so it's... It's a uh, it's it's the newest the, the hottest craze in conspiracy theories. People are saying that uh, pigeons uh, I've read specifically are basically spying on people and they're they're surveilling the people. And by the way, if they're not, they definitely are now. That's what you've done with this movement, you conspiracy <laughs> loons. It's a great idea. Why wouldn't they do it? It is it's, a great it's idea. Genius. It's very so, easy to execute too. But um, stop talking about it because that's – they're going to use it. They really are. It's for Dick. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, what else you got? What else I got? <laughs> um, oh, I saw one. So there's a couple more stories I want to talk about. But there's one that I found. So your skin crawled when you saw the sea louse in that snapper's mouth, yes, right? very okay. much so. <laughs> I, I'm not a tattoo guy. Don't have any of them. Not against them, just not – not interested, right? Patrick and I once made a pact that if Extinct or Alive did six seasons, I get an Extinct or Alive tattoo. Um, <laughs> that's why I called and canceled the well, show. By but the way, um, little, little tidbit: our camera guy Mitch has a tattoo for every episode of Extinct or Alive for yeah. every expedition. Wow! Yeah. Wrapping yeah, around his nice. arm, he's got the animal. It's it's dope. It's super cool. Um, wow. But that's there's crazy. a tattoo artist in LA, I believe, 
um, who has started doing hyper-realistic spider tattoos. And now, I appreciate what they are for the art, but they are yuck. One, because I don't particularly like spiders, and two, because who the hell gets this kind of tattoo, specifically in the ear ones? You'll see, there's like three or four ear ones, and it is just... Oh, no, like it's crawling out of the ear kind of thing? Yeah, Peter, you, you gonna help us out here? Um, that's, oh, I'm that's, helping, baby, I'm helping. That's, it's, that's nast. You'll see. You know who gets that? Who? A guy named Brandon, but he goes right. by Snake. <laughs> wow, that looks super real. <laughs> that is 3D as shit, too, man. Isn't it? Wow. He does, like, the whole... Go to the next one, Peter. Yeah, start getting oh, these weird God. ones. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> it's it's horrific. Oh, my God. Go to the next one, Peter. They're, every one yeah. I actually had to look at for a few minutes. Look at that one. That one, tell me that isn't a real spider crawling into this guy's ear. Yeah, that's dude. crazy. That isn't that shadow, nuts? dude? If you saw that guy on the subway, you would jump. Well, here's Dude, what I, I was thinking. Want one of these. But please, please, Peter, I will pay for it. I'll pay every single God? second. I swear to God, if you get this, I will pay for it. I swear to God. Does it have to, to be God. on my ear? Can I get it on nope. my ass? You can get it anywhere you like. Crawling towards your butt hole. a fake ass. Yeah. <laughs> please, dude, please. <laughs> Look at but, this but, one, dude. But, okay, yeah. time out for one second. So this, okay. this guy or gal with the shaved head here has the roses and stuff. If I saw this on a subway... I would run over with a newspaper and bop this person on the head instantly and think that I was doing them a favor. Uh, because yeah. that spider looks Bop. so freaking real. I, I mean, yeah. it's amazing. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. But so, I mean, here's, here's the problem. Once that fades, that's brand new. These are all brand new. Once those fade a bit, it's not going to look as real. And then you're just going to have a shitty, weird, faded tattoo on your head. You just got to get touched up, baby boy. Do all Come tattoos on, who does fade? That? Do all tattoos fade? Yeah, they do. I, oh, yeah, I got a terrible one on me that's faded. Peter's got a big tattoo. Don't no, you? you don't. Where? Yeah, it's on my back, yo. Really? Upper upper back. I've yeah, never seen back. that ever. It's pretty big. It's like the size of it's a huge. football. I yeah. mean, so so when I was seventeen, you're everybody who all seventeen year old males are fucking idiots. That's I wanted to accurate. get it. Dude, I, I paid $250 to get a, a tattoo that took four hours to do on my upper middle back. You want to know what it is? Yeah. It's a picture I thought was cool from a book I never read. <laughs> okay. No way. And I, I swear to God, it's called uh, Dragon way, Tears. Did you do this to impress one specific girl? Probably. My mom, yeah. No, but <laughs> seriously. But I had to ask permission from my mom. It was like a whole thing. Why? What you is read the wrong book with the male brain? Have you read the book no. today? It's. I've tried to read it. It's not readable. It's. It's <laughs> unpalatable for my brain. What a fucking idiot. What are you? What are you gonna do with that? I didn't even know you had that. I granted, I don't think I've ever seen you with your shirt off. But what? Well, are you? Are you? Are you gonna get it touched up? You gonna do a? No. You gonna do a? The biggest mistake of all and get an enormous cover up that's four times no. the size of the original <laughs> tattoo and never looks very good. No, I, I mean here's the thing about getting a tattoo on your upper back. You, you never fucking see it or think about it. So that's true. It, it it served its purpose, but I mean every girl I've ever fucking dated or whatever has made fun of me and you know. All right. Tattoo. If this if this podcast, if a thousand people share this podcast with a friend. Yeah. Peter will get a realistic spider tattoo on his belly. Yes. Ass. Crawling ass out of your belly ass. button. Or will you anus. get it? And we'll pay for it. The patrons will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love we'll how for, for us. We'll pay for I mean, the patrons, the I, patrons I, will pay no, for it. No, I will personally pay for it. I'm not kidding. I will Absolutely. personally pay for you to get that spider crawling in or out of your listen. butthole, your belly button, your cheek mm -hmm. towards mouth, whatever you want. <laughs> uh, listen, I'll, I'll do it, but... I'll need one Bitcoin from both of you. Nope. One that's, Bitcoin each. That's so one. So one Bitcoin. Peter, that's speaking about being 17 and doing stupid shit, so you yeah. you missed the last Patreon bonus episode that we did. For those oh, of you who are, are not Patreons yet, we do four extra podcasts every month. They're a lot of fun. Uh, we do stuff we can't do on YouTube because we'd get kicked off. Uh, <laughs> that's so but true. Forrest yeah. and I did a game where we, we basically did our top five lists. Probably the one that had us both laughing our fucking asses off the most was uh, five most unfortunate things about middle school. Yep. So it's not it's not like, you know, not like a specific incident, but just things like you're 13. 
you get a lot of boners you can't control, you know, acne, yep. things like that. What <laughs> yep, was, what yeah. was, since you weren't there, Peter, what's your number one most unfortunate thing about the embarrassment of middle school? Dude, I don't know if I've told this story before. Here but we go. When I was in fourth grade, I it's liked a girl, her name... Yeah, it is. Oh, it's not. I mean, my whole That's okay. first Tell two the story. was... It's all right. Tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. Stop fucking splitting hairs, dude. Fuck off. All right. <laughs> so I, I was in fourth grade and I liked this girl. Her name was Katie. And in, when I was in fourth grade, I, I fucking would do the weirdest shit, like try and mimic her movements from across. We were being in church. It was a Catholic school. Mimic like what she was doing, like the, her timings for standing, kneeling and shit. It was so weird and fucking creepy. But... One time it, in it class. It sounds like it. Yes, it <laughs> is weird and creepy. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're real dumb, like, when you're in fourth it's grade. True. But true. true. One time in class, I, I, uh, I, w- I wrote her name in, like, fucking marker on my arm. Huge, like, K-A-T. It was the whole arm, right? And uh, my teacher caught me doing it. She saw me fucking doing something on my arm. And she's like, Peter, you want to share with the class what you're doing there? And she didn't know, I don't think. She makes me come up to the front of the class. And, uh, and, and then I was like very defiant, even at that stage of my life. And I was like, I don't care. It says Katie. And I love her or some bullshit. Some ridiculous oh boy. fucking shit. And I literally, like, I just, it was, it's to this I day. Look. I, I don't think I can do the podcast now anymore after <laughs> telling that story. <laughs> What if she's what if she's a listener and she comes up? She's like, wait, this is this is my Peter. This is yeah, she, I've no, thought about this she, gesture for the last thirty years. I, I realized I realized later in life, actually recently, because I obviously still these things come to you at night. And oh, like, oh, and they give you the sweats, boy. Yeah, <laughs> they I sure mean, do. I have the sweats right now just from telling it. I realized <laughs> I that I must have fucking just creeped her out for the eight years that we went to that school. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, God, man, sure. that is fucked up, dude. For and sure. I didn't even know I was doing it at the time. She, she didn't go to the same high school as you for a reason. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. So it's being yeah. getting the sweat. So today, uh, so I'm going out on a fishing trip tomorrow with a couple of my buddies, right? We're going to go offshore, look for, for tuna and Dorado. Get a real yellow. job for us tomorrow. I will not. <laughs> I, I know. Will not. Tomorrow's a Tuesday, I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I'm going out fishing with my buddies, and my one buddy in Santa Barbara, um, he he's I'm, I text him and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go on my boat. You should go on your boat, and we'll buddy boat and we'll look cover more ground that way. Blah blah. He's like, I'm down. And he texts me this morning at like 8 a.m. and he's like, hey, what are you doing at lunchtime? I'm like, I don't know. I just got a bunch of work to do. He's like, do you want to go look for fish from the plane? And I'm like, you have a plane? And he's like, yeah. I was like, oh, that's something I didn't know about you. And I'm like, yeah, sure, sounds good. I'll meet you. There's a small airport in Santa Barbara. I was like, I'll meet you at the airport. He's like, yeah, be there at noon. So I show up at noon, go out, walk out on the on the uh, the tarmac. It's like you know the little like where the private planes are kept around the side. There's no security or anything. And my buddy Parker's waiting there. Parker's like, come on, man, let's jump in, let's go look. I'm like, sweet. Parker's our you know my age. He's thirty. He's probably he's a little younger. He's probably thirty years old, right? We hop in the plane, and he goes, kind of like does the old knuckle pop and kind of looks at everything and goes, okay. And he starts like flipping switches and turning it on. <laughs> And I, and I look, and he's, like, pretty sweaty. And, like, yeah, it's hot in the plane, but, like, he's pretty sweaty. And I'm like, Parker, uh, everything okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, everything's good. And I'm like, all right. And then uh, I notice, like, he's like, uh, try that. Nope, nope, that's not right. And he's, like, starting to kind of fiddle, fiddle around <laughs> Forrest, a little bit. Forrest, come on. Yeah. You got out of the plane right then, right? No, listen, it gets worse, man. Oh, and, my uh, God. So I'm like, I'm like. And I, I'm, I'm the guy who never buckles his seatbelt in the plane. I'm like, ugh, it's of so course. stupid, it's a plane. So I'm seeing him fidgeting, and I'm like, <laughs> all right. So he sees me buckling my seatbelt, and, like, it takes him a lot longer to get things started than any plane I've ever been in before. And I'm like, Parker, uh, do you have your pilot's license? And he's like, yeah, no, I do, I do, I do. It's just been a minute. And I'm like, okay. Oh, he's 30 years old. I'm like, when's the when did you get your pilot's license? And he's like, oh, when I was 18. I'm oh, like, man. nice, man. That's not bad. Um, so you've been flying a long time. He's like, well, sort of. The last time I flew was when I got my pilot's license. He's oh 30 years God. old. He hasn't flown a plane since he was 18. And we're now going to go, we're now going to go, you know, 100 plus miles offshore to look for kelp patties. 
with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just him and, and he's him. trying to figure out how and to he's turn figuring the fucking it out plane as out. we go. And I'm like, <laughs> I was just like, I was like, ah. All right, sounds good, and just buckled in, and uh, uh, the takeoff was fine, the flying was awesome, and the landing was very, very rough, but we made oh it. Oh, my yeah, that, God. That's the hard part, is the <laughs> landing bit. Yeah. Also very important, sir. Yeah, it right. sure was. Why did you go with him? Explain oh yourself. God. I don't know. He said. He said. He said we'd be fine. We were fine. This is. This has got to be probably one of the dumbest things that you've ever done. I mean, you made it out. We're good, dude. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you a story. Watch a fucking YouTube video before you guys got in the plane. No, I told you. He he had his pilot's license. It's just been about. I took fucking geometry eighteen years ago too. I still don't know how to fucking you know. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> no shit, dude. I looked yeah. at my nephew's fucking SAT questions. I was like, isosceles? What is this shit? I used to know it. Let me tell you a story. Shape? You yeah, ever watch please. the show, the original Press Your Luck, the No Whammy, No Whammy? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No Whammy, well, No Whammy, No Whammy? There was a Big wonderful year. TV host, just like you. He was on TV. His name was Peter Tamarkin. Okay. He brought joy to many lives. Okay. One day, an experienced pilot he was. <laughs> He takes off in his Beechcraft aircraft in 2006, takes off from Santa Monica Airport, and to a entire beach full of horrified onlookers, crashes into the ocean, killing everyone oh on board. Oh, my God. No okay. way. Yeah. This is an experience. This guy was flying that plane four days a week. Yeah. Bad things can happen to people, you're aware. No, I am aware There's of that. There's so many factors, And you're not even bro. famous enough. I... You'd probably no, no make one TMZ. Would care. No one would no, <laughs> no. TMZ wouldn't give it. They'd be like, Forrest, who? Uh, <laughs> no. here's, the, here's the most terrifying part. I'm pretty sure that as a pilot of small planes, you got to know how to fucking do like the maintenance checklist on yeah. the plane before you take it up. It's, it's huge. It's got to be like 100 items. Did he even have a list that he checked things off on? I bet he didn't. Sounds know. like no. I don't know. I got there I'm a little late, so maybe he did it before. I, I don't know. But was whatever. he wearing shorts? And flip-flops, but he was you don't good. You fly with... <laughs> was a good flip-flop you need a, pilot. you got to have a captain a suit on, God damn it. No, he was a good flip-flop <laughs> Dude, pilot. Dude, if I got onto a Boeing 767 to fly out of LAX to land in JFK, and the fucking pilot's wearing board shorts and flip-flops, I'm off the plane, back down the fucking tube, going back to the bar. Good oh, God! Boy. Hey, needless, real quick. needless to say, I was pretty sweaty on that end of that flight. I was like, Whew, "Okay, we're back. All right, very yeah. good." <laughs> yeah, fucking uh, ridiculous. Well, yeah, go ahead. I got a special surprise for all the Brosners here before Peter has Ooh. to go to his Rosh Hashanah meal. Can we get the jingle? Because it's Ooh. time for a double dose. Double dose. Of. I think I know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? Time. What? The battle. Battle Royale. Yeah. Battle Royale. That a boy. What do you got, Pat? Brosner David Moore submitted one that I like quite a bit. This is going to be a motherfucking insect battle, y'all. This is. Woo! We each pick three insects to fight okay. against the other guy's team of three insects. But here's the twist. The insects are human size, so each one is six feet long, six feet tall, right. however you want to say it. So they're all the same size, but they obviously have the powers and abilities scaled up to be Great. six feet long. Love uh, it. So it's an insect full-on battle. Forrest, why yeah. don't you go first? Sure. And please, why not? please don't take my best one. Okay, I won't. Uh, I'll go first. Something that I've literally had nightmares about would be if the most voracious, vicious animal that I can think of, the most terrifying creature were to get six foot tall, would be the praying mantis. To have a six foot tall praying, just those like (laughs) slicing and dicing arms and like sitting up there. Oh my God, it would be so gnarly. Just ripping your head off and sucking your juices out. Six foot tall praying mantis. Well, sucking my juices out. I could be into that. But (laughs) I will say, uh, I feel like the, that many, a uh, movie monster is the base of it is the praying mantis. A hundred percent. Yeah. The way they move, right? Yeah. Yeah, And aliens and shit. All right. I'll go next. I'm going to go with uh, uh, one of my favorites. I'm going to go with the African assassin bug. Oh, very nice. (laughs) 
Uh, it has Quine. a venom. It's it's small, okay. right? It's it's an insect. Scale yeah. this bitch up to six feet tall, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Its venom is ten times more potent than a cobra's. This thing wow. is a badass. It is venomous, and I want a big one. I want that power on my does, team of three. It does the is the venom? Uh, it just comes out via bite. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, my first insect won't be anywhere near your insect because I will be picking the bombardier beetle. Which a, can- a favorite of the Wild Times podcast. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I, I was going to pick it, and I was like, I picked it literally two days ago, not doing yeah. it. If you don't know about the bombardier beetle, it, when threatened, it will spray you with boiling liquid that it produces from a chemical heat reaction in its body. So it will basically tar you. It will it will spit fucking boiling, juicy, sticky liquid on you. And at six feet, friends, that's a lot of fucking well, liquid. Here, here's the twist. It doesn't spit it on you. It shoots it out of its asshole. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a butthole. Even better. It's a butthole. Even Cooper. better. Yeah. All right, you're up for another Peter. <clears throat> oh, I'm up for number two. Yep. This is great. Glad I fucking went last because I am going to pick the rhinoceros beetle, which can lift up to 850 times its body weight. Good a Google foot, reading. A six foot giant beetle. I got to imagine it's it's pretty obese, probably the size of John Candy. So we're going to say three, <laughs> 400 pounds times 850. We're going, I mean, this thing can lift, let's see, 300 Times yeah, a, a lot. Eight, we yeah, sure. yeah. Two hundred and fifty-five thousand pounds. <laughs> it's like a, it's the strongest animal in the world. Sure, now. sure, sure. <laughs> That's a good pick. Fucked. So the, the rhinoceros beetle pick. is is a strong beetle, but Great it's pick. nowhere near the strongest. The horned dung beetle will be the second member of my team. It's much stronger. Nice. Uh, it's able. It's capable of lifting eleven hundred and forty <laughs> times its body weight. Uh, so I've got a much, much stronger beetle. So that's just yours is dead. Quick, quick, quick question. Yeah. Let me inter- Let me just ask a question. How <laughs> is your beetle at lifting weights when it's covered in boiling hot, sticky liquid? Really good. <laughs> it's got a nice exoskeleton. <laughs> is there a study on that? All right. All right. Forrest, you're up for two. Uh, sure. Um, you guys both just have the same two picks of just Patrick's are both just one step above yours. <laughs> um, all right. I have a six foot tall praying mantis. This animal, my next pick is a creature that it's not as toxic. It's not as terrifying. It's not as vicious. It's literally just going to terrify. It's just going to horrify anybody that looks at this thing. There's an insect called a scorpion fly. If you if you Google image this thing, it'll blow your mind. It's a real, it's a scorpion with wings, with this head that is just disgusting. Um, they, they infest human corpses and break down uh, tissue. They're really gross. But a six foot one of these things flying around would be unbelievably terrifying. So, um, scorpion fly. So you have... Your whole team just consists of things that look scary. No, right? No, praying mantis okay. is gnarly. This doesn't just look well, scary. I mean, I didn't hear any uh, abilities that it has. You just said it's what? scary looking. That's not okay. at all true. I said it was going to slice you with its arms okay. and suck out your insides. And okay, yeah. All right, you're right. You did say that. Well, friends, hang on. Well, Forrest nope. has another nope. pick. Nope. nope. Oh shit! Nope. I thought I had one. Done it. Seventy. Okay. Go. Sorry. Not for a time. while. Seventy-four. Yeah. Um, Seventy-four. And 10 or 11 <laughs> bonus points. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's see something else. So what I don't have while praying mantis... Eh, no, that's good. He wasn't even ready! That's true, I wasn't. I was trying to come up with... Uh, yeah, I'm sticking with this nightmarish theme that I've got going on, and I'm enjoying <laughs> it. So my next pick, my last and final pick, a, another animal that I think will just make everybody skin crawl, a six-foot-long giant Amazonian centipede. It is oh, toxic. Boy. They are gross. Their venom is not strong enough to kill a human it is strong enough to kill birds lizards rodents etc but it's six foot tall it's going to be terrifying its venom is going to be enough at that point to kill people and yeah giant giant centipede that's a good okay. pick i feel pick. really confident in my team because i've got the venom and i've got the strength mm-hmm. okay but i what what i like the element of surprise too right a surprise attack that's why the that's why we won the revolutionary war they were marching in red coats. We surprised them. I'm going to disarm your teams with the cute cuddliness 
of my six foot tall Venezuelan poodle moth. A poodle moth, wow, what a call. <laughs> It is covered, it literally is a, a giant moth that looks like a poodle. It's covered in no, white they're, fur. They're adorable. 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 Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a fucking battle. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Surprise. So, this is ridiculous. Pat has just intentionally, I think, thrown this game. But <clears throat> my final pick, and I'm very surprised nobody picked any of these insects. I'm going with a bark spider. Okay. Interesting. Because that's that's an it, arachnid, not an insect. But next, Pat, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it has the strongest webs out of all insects or arachnids, as Pat has pointed out. And it's twenty-five. This web is twenty-five times stronger than steel. So, Pat, your cute, stupid moth will be first webbed. Then shot with boiling water out of an insect's ass, and then <laughs> destroyed by the strength of 10 million men. So fuck off. It's and good. all of your other animals will be destroyed by the exact same combo. Very good. Fatality. Well, let's let the Brosners decide. I'm realizing now let's. that my Halloween strategy might not have been the best one, but I'll stick with it. <laughs> A lot of confidence here with my six-foot-tall praying mantis, a giant scorpion fly, and a giant centipede. That's a that's the yuckiest team, no questions asked. Uh, yeah. Patrick's bringing to the table an assassin bug with incredible venom, a horn dung beetle with amazing strength, and a cute poodle moth. I'm not gonna lie, if there was a six foot poodle moth, I I I'd, I'd be the Joe Exotic of poodle moths. I'd be breeding yeah. them. I'd have I'd have dozens of them. One would be in my house. I'd mur I'd find someone's husband and murder him or whatever Carol Baskins did. Um, I, I'd be all about it. Um, Peter Carol Baskins. Peter is bringing to the table a bombardier beetle, six foot tall. That's a lot of hot poopy water. Um, <laughs> the strength of a rhino beetle and mm. the web of a bark spider. The web is a good. That's yeah, it's, it's a definitely good addition, not. But it's a good addition. It's it's not within the. Nobody's asking for rules. your commentary. Just that's read true. the fucking that's ability. Yeah, I've, well, read them. Well, I've read. Them why not take a tiger? I mean. It's not <laughs> an insect, and so Why it's not? disqualified. You have two. You Pat, only have two Are you teams. ever going to get a new hat? Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Peter. Wait. Do you have to get to dinner? We got time for something I, else. I, I do, but Pat Pat promised two battle royales, which I thought was stupid because we discussed me playing a game with you guys that involves. No, oh, let's do that instead. We'll do. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. We'll save your 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 good one for next time, Forrest. Yeah, Could, yeah. anytime. Yeah. So look forward to that, but this this is gonna be a fun game, Let's and I did it. at least three and a half minutes of prep for it, so we're playing it. <laughs> okay. All right. So the game is I read you guys a news headline, okay. and you try and tell me what the story is for the news headline. Got okay. It. Got okay. It. All right. Okay. So okay. the first one: <clears throat> female octopuses throw shells at males, annoying them. So why why would they do this or everything? You know, what do you think about this? Oh, like what are the details of the the news piece? Yeah, like what, like, what do you what do you think? I, yeah. oh, got it. Okay. Um, females. I, I'm guessing that uh, males come into their dens and try and take something, and females get irritated and just chuck a shell at them and be like, "Hey, get out of here." Okay. Okay. New I'm science. guessing. I'm guessing it's more like the male goes out and eats like male octopus goes out eats some like fermented fruit that fell in off a tree <laughs> so he's drunk okay comes back drunk <laughs> and they're just like i'm gonna fucking pepper you with shells it's just domestic violence yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, got it okay. I, I liked where pat was going with that he's almost there <clears throat> the only part that's missing is he tries to mate with said female, right? So uh, th that's what's going on here in this news it. article. Got They're it. trying to mate, and if the female doesn't want it, <laughs> they throw shit at them. Got and it. I, fi I that's find cool. that hilarious. That's great. No that's means super no. Cool. That's a good news story. Very good. Love the yeah, octopus. Love yeah. the octopus. Okay. Next one. U.S. Copyright Office says this monkey picture can't be copyrighted. Whoa. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, I, I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So mm -hmm. there's a very popular It's Curious George. It's Curious George. He's he's <laughs> the artistic it's it, it, okay. it's that's someone's IP. You know, it's like a it's like a monkey. If it's here's the thing, it's a real monkey, it's like a chimpanzee in a Curious George outfit, but it can't be copyrighted because 
that's IP that belongs to the guy that created Curious George, and it's a it's a it's a whole blow up because the guy who dressed up as Chimp as Curious George just thought it was funny, and now we're all upset about it. Okay, that's your guess, or do you that's know that? Guess. Okay, no, I'm going to say that it. it's I'm going to say that there's a very famous photo of Jane Goodall with a gorilla uh, or an a- sorry an ape. Same thing, right? Yeah, yep. gorilla yeah. is an ape, not a monkey. And but it doesn't matter. Someone cropped her out, and it's become a meme and they wanted to copyright it but they can't very close uh but both wrong nobody gets a point actually back in 2011 a macaw grabbed a famous wildlife photographer's camera macaque. his name was da- david you, slater you, you do that every time macaw's a bird thank you macaque and um and took a selfie of of itself so the 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 macaque took a picture of itself and the guy later found the picture on Wikimedia, which is a place where people put public domain photos that anybody can use. Mm-hmm. And he sued them and it got thrown out. And the judge said, no, a monkey Put selfie cannot be copyrighted. Can I just so. point out if you just did like a guess the like two truths and a lie of those three uh, stories, <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't know which one was the most ridiculous because they're all absolutely absurd. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so and then what actually happened, Slater was uh, he tried to come up with a defense against that later saying, claiming that the monkey was actually his assistant. Wow. Oh swear my to God. God. Swear to God. <laughs> no joke. Assistant. That's, <laughs> monkey that's a bold play. That's a bold yeah. play. Yeah. OK. That's a good one. You got another okay. one? These are fun. Yeah. One, one more. Uh, at least one more quick one. Um, An endangered amphibian with a controversial nickname known for its saggy folds of excess skin goes on display at UK Zoo. It's a long one, but it's an interesting one. No, no, I got it. I got it. Okay. Forrest, you got to go first on this one. (laughs) Sure. So the horny toad, which is a (laughs) colloquialism, Mm -hmm. is now being displayed in a British museum, but that's triggering those people who are asexual and don't believe that being horny is good is okay. my guess. That's kind of out there. That's the best thing we do. Give me the headline one guess. more time. An endangered amphibian with a controversial nickname known for its saggy folds of excess skin goes on display at UK Zoo. God, Forrest, I think you might have just gotten it. It's not bad, um, right? It's not bad because Horny Toad, that's like a colloquialism. It's a nickname. Like, Name for its bad. excess skin. I think I think that there's, there, is a, um, there is an amphibian known as the, uh, <laughs> known as the fatty pig lizard. <laughs> <laughs> that's reptile shit. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's fatty the fatty pig frog. Yeah, the fatty pig frog, yeah. and uh, they think it's gonna. People are gonna be offended by that. That are overweight. <laughs> okay, um, very <laughs> very <laughs> good guesses. Um, there's really not much to say. It's called a scrotum frog. That's its nickname. Oh my god! Uh, Again, if you did two truths in a line, nobody yeah. would guess. <laughs> yep, the frog's formal name is Telmatobius Culeus, but earned its unfortunate nickname because of the saggy folds of excess skin, which it uses to absorb oxygen from the water at the bottom lake Titicaca that borders Bolivia and Peru. So the scrotum cool. frog. It's also endangered, but I also just think it's great that the scrotum frog lives in Lake Titicaca. Yeah. I know. These I know, are just right? this is like this is like a twelve year old's dream scenario, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, all right. This is good. Well, I do gotta get going though. Well, happy Rosh Hashanah, everyone. Uh, enjoy your, your meal, Peter. Your meal yeah. of food. Yeah. We love y'alls. Uh, yep. new bonuses going on the Patreon. Yes. And uh, we are we just locked in our date for back in the studio. We are gonna do a full tasting of the entire Taco Bell menu. One of every item. One of every item. That's going to be <laughs> yeah. insane. It's oh, be man. Yeah. Good, okay. thing, good thing the studio has a restroom. Is yes. all I will say. <laughs> Vote for me in Battle Royale. Want to do a quick shout out. There's a new Wild Times meme account on Instagram, which is fucking hilarious. Oh my god, it's my new favorite thing on, the, on Instagram. Not kidding. Yeah. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> Edwin J. put that up. He's a Patreon. He's a Brosner. I mean, he asked if he could do it. You guys are fucking nuts. Uh, I love the TWT cult, so that's awesome. 
Uh, go find links to all of those, to that and all the other shit, the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info. The Patreon got more clips from that coming out on the YouTube. We just did a fucking bunch of bonus pods. And there's a ton of amazing fucking content coming your way. Yep. Uh, and so go check that out at patreon.com forward slash wild times pod. And Pat, don't feed your dog your own dick. I never would. Wow, yeah! <laughs> Light up pen. Ooh. Light up pen. Good night, everybody.